guys, Zul here. I've been requested to make this video tutorial on how I do my black coloring. And it's super easy and it's super fast and I wanted to share it with you guys so that maybe you could take it away and take it into your own practices and hopefully get you to speed up your process and figure out a new way of doing things to your own pieces. So let's get to it. Okay, first off, you need to have your line art layer on a completely separate layer to what you're going to be working on. Uh, you want to make sure that all your lines are as closed off as what they can be. And you need to make sure that um, you're basically happy with your line art. Uh, you can have it in a single layer like I've done, or you can have it in um, multiple layers. Like if you want to do an extra little piece of detailing here, you could, um, you know, just do something like that and have it as a separate layer. But know that this technique if you do have multiple layers with different aspects on them, you will need to make a folder, call it line art, and put any of your line art layers into this folder. Now this process works regardless of whether you're doing it for a single layer or for multiple layers, but you can only have one selection source at a time. So what we are focusing on in order to do our line art is this process button right here called selection source. Now it says use as region selection source for magic wand bucket fill tool. You'll want to select this. It'll turn your layer green. Now this means that whenever you use your lasso, your magic wand tool, this is the layer that it will be taking from. This is the layer that it will get all its information from as regards what you want to do to it or under it. So what you'll want to do is you'll want to make a layer underneath your line art layer. Now, I've made a list of all of my keyboard shortcuts. I will put this in the comment section or in the description for you to look over and adjust your working process from there. Now in order to make these keyboard shortcuts you can either go into others keyboard shortcuts or if you've got like your basic brush tool, your eraser, your bucket tool, anything like this you can double click on the tool itself in this area here and change the shortcut key to whatever you want here. Now you cannot do your control shifts, your alt shifts, your any of your modify shortcuts, they need to be done in your keyboard shortcuts through the others window. Okay? So the main two processes of what you want to be using is your magic wand and your lasso tools. They're normally located in your panels above your brushes and this is what I basically use to do to do uh, my processing. You always want to make sure whatever tool you have um, selected, if it has the option to do anti-aliasing, select it. Okay. Anti-aliasing is a technique used to add greater realism to a digital image by smoothing jagged lines on curved lines and diagonals. What that basically means is you won't get all those little tiny little pixels that annoy you when you're selecting things and <clears throat> it just smooths out the process basically. Um, that is not what I want. Okay, so other tools that you will be needing to do this process is the select and deselect tools located in your panels over here. Okay, 
So now that we've got our layer underneath our line art layer, we can do a general fill. And we'll want to use our magic wand tool, which I've got set to Z. <clears throat> and we're going to talk about the detection mode processes and the target right here. So usually for when I'm doing my line art uh, and my process, I will fill with the same color that I've done my line art layer as. Because I normally set my line art to multiply. And if you set a layer to multiply and put it in a group, it won't, as you can see, it doesn't show up. So for this process, I'm just going to take it out of the group and I'm going to use a better color for you guys to see. We'll go back to that blue so that you can see exactly what I'm doing. So you'll want to use your magic wand tool, transparency, strict. Now this slider, the lower it is, Oops. You want to have it set to selection source. So transparency strict or fuzzy, dependent on your mood. Selection source will take the information from here and you can do this. And the lower the value in this slider means the values, the, the, the lowest one is the closest values and the largest number is the largest values. So what that means is if you've got it set to zero, it will go as close as what it can to this line, to the, to the uh, closed off lines that you've got. If you've got it set to the highest, it's just gonna go, I'm gonna select everything I possibly can. There'll be a few little bits and pieces that I don't want to select. So for my process, I normally have it set to zero or, you know, low enough that if I want to have the selection line come in a little bit into the um, base, that's fine too. But it, just play around with the slider, see what works for you and go from there, essentially. Now what I tend to do is I select all around the outside of my line art as much as what I possibly can. Now you'll see these tiny, tiny little bits of gunk right here. And that's where your select brush comes in. So hit G, which normally means bucket tool, but this will give you your dotted um, ant line selection around your uh, around your line art and then you'll want to hit select I'm increasing and decreasing the brush size and I'll just zoom in and I'll do it like a regular brush so I'm just getting rid of all these little gunky line bits all these little pixels just getting rid of them You know, you'll probably notice little bits later on when you're colouring. That's fine, you can just go back in and adjust as you need to. If you ever need, like, if you ever end up going, uh, oh no, look what I've done, you can go to the deselect tool and do this. So if you've done an accident and you don't notice and then suddenly, you know, you've done that, hit your deselect tool and just erase it out and carry on. So for the sake of brevity, as Matt Mercer would say, we'll just go ahead and get it to this stage. So all you've got to do now is hit your delete tool. 
delete, deselect, and as you can see, you've got your bases here. So what you want to do is hit preserve opacity, and now you cannot go out of your lines. So you've got your base block color here. Now this is where it gets super, super quick and super fast. So I'm just going to select a completely opposite garish color just to show you the basic principle. Now if you're just wanting to block in colors, what you can do is select these areas because it's taking from the selection source. You can select those basic areas, hit G and either hit G again and tap or hit Control and F to fill. So another way of doing this, once you've got it like this and you go, oh, I really don't like this color, is you can hit your magic wand tool again, hit color difference, working layer, make sure you're on your working layer, and then hit the color. And then you can go into your control and saturation and change your colors up from there. Okay, so the color difference slider works exactly the same on color difference as it does on transparency strict and transparency fuzzy. Um, I've not played around much with all image, but I assume that it's pretty much the same as any of these. It, it just it just selects from the entire canvas as opposed to an area that you've selected. So we've discussed select deselect. We've got our keyboard shortcuts, which I will list again. These are your two main tools. Now another one I want to include for you is, it makes it sometimes easier, sometimes not, is the invert selection tool. Now you'll find this in your, what's it called, quick bar, as this little icon right here, or you go invert, selection invert. Now what this does is let's just fill that. Oh, that's a horrid color. Okay. So what you can do is if you're selecting the outside of the image, is you can just hit G, and inverse. Say you 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 just you. you it's basically just a tool for, you know, doing an inverse selection, basically. It's, it's not, it just helps sometimes to quicken up the process, figure a bit basically on what you're wanting to do. Now, I've already got pre-selected the colors that I had for this piece. And as you can see, we've got it all on the line art. Now, if I want to go, uh, I don't really want her to have this blue. You know, I don't, I don't like the blue. So let's let's give her a different color. Now, if you're wanting to select all of these different hues of blue, you increase your slider to the point where. You will have to play around with this for some different areas dependent on how you filled it. Because as you can see, it's selecting around here and that's because I was lazy. You can be a little bit better than I was. So once you've got this selected, you hit your G, Control U for hue and saturation and play around with your colors. Very simple, very basic, 
hue slider, light, dark, saturated, not saturated, rainbow party. Okay. So that is basically all you need to know on how to do these um, basic colors. Now, it's just a matter of playing around and you can obviously do layers above it. You'll want to, if I want to select these, like this very inside of this rain, I go back to my transparency strict or fuzzy selection source so that we're, it's just selecting in between the lines. We select in between the lines, select a different color, control fill. There you go. Super easy, super fast, and not to shame anyone, but guys, when I see people just, you know, going around the outside and then going, oh no, I've missed a spot, I've got to go in, this will speed up your process tenfold and you can have more time to do the fun parts of the commission or the piece and just play around and enjoy yourself again. You're not having to spend like an hour just going around like this and going, oh, I hate it. And oh, now I've got to do another color and oh, I've got to do this. And it, it just, it speeds it up so much. And Photoshop has these tools as well. But I found that you have to really select the right areas of what Photoshop wants to select. Otherwise, you know, you, you're spending just as long as you are, you know, going around it old school style. So Psy, this feature is a lifesaver. Okay. So if you guys have any questions, you want to ask me anything more about my process, just give me a comment below. If you want to see more videos and tutorials, also, you know, pop a suggestion in the comment box. Give me a like, follow and subscribe. All of my social media platforms are listed in the description. And I will probably be launching a Patreon at some point to help me create these. Uh, videos if you want to support me and you found this helpful. I've also linked my Ko-fi page uh, in the description if you want to send a few dollars my way. Okay, thanks guys and I hope this helped you and I'm looking forward to seeing what you produce with, you know, knowing this vital little bit of information. Okay, bye guys. Thanks. Later.